What's up, Liron here. Today we're gonna learn how to paint this bowl of cherries. We're gonna talk about how to produce a nice sense of light and shadow, color harmony, composition, how to approach drawing such a subject, uh, and you're gonna see all of the process narrated full time. Let's get started. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in this video. Today I'm gonna to show you, as I mentioned, this full painting process and drawing from start to finish. Um, and you'll be able to follow my thought process. I made a few decisions that weren't necessarily the best with this one. I made a few decisions that were really good. Um, I made some mistakes, had some successes, but overall I'm very pleased with the end result. I think it conveys the scene in a nice and, and very uh, complementing way. Uh, I love how layering all of the muted colors together with the bright red cherries creates this interesting uh, effect of uh, brightness and light and shadow and glow, this sort of effect, and you're gonna see everything. So without further ado, let's get started with the process. Okay, so we'll get started and I'm gonna start with the plan. Uh, because this is something I had a lot of trouble with when I got started in watercolor. I know it's what challenges most people and so this is what I want to focus on unlike just going straight for it and hoping that you understand everything. I hate when uh, tutorials do that. So if you look at the reference uh, one really interesting thing to note is that the table is about a third of this length. So what you get is the table should be according to the reference around here. Now my problem with this measurement is that it doesn't allow enough room for the bowl, so the composition ends up being a little distorted. The edge of the bowl and the cherries on it get way too close to this edge, while there is a lot of space down here that I don't really want. Uh, I wanna get rid of that. So what I will do is lower this just a bit, so even just around here, instead of here, here. And what this does is it will allow me, and you know what, let's make it a little more extreme. Let's do it here. Okay, and what this does is it will allow me to show what's above a little better. So I'm gonna start with the, the tabletop because that's the most uh, large continuous shape or line. And I'm gonna measure the same measurement I did here and I'm gonna be more scientific about it now. I'm gonna actually measure this. So from here it's about six centimeters, a little less than six. So this is the exact same measurement I'm gonna do on the other side. So a little less than six centimeters is around here. And that's gonna be my tabletop line, okay? And I'm freehanding it, but I just wanted to show you how I do the measurement uh, with the ruler, just to be a little more accurate and on the safe side. So now we can get started with the ball. What I need to make sure is that the entire curve is above this height, okay? Because that's just how I see it uh, in the reference should be somewhere around here in terms of height. Uh, and this is important for our composition. Now let's decide on its length. So I want it to be from, let's say this edge here. I think this is good. And again, this is the bottom edge of it, somewhere around here. I'm gonna constrain the oval in this kind of rectangle, okay? And I'm just gonna go for it and see what, what happens. And sometimes I'd get a better result by just freehanding it from the get. Uh, but I don't know why I felt like taking a more scientific approach with this one. Now, as I mentioned, the bottom of the bowl is about double, from this point to the bottom of the bowl is double this length. So that's one, and that's two, approximately. And this is where the bottom of the bowl is gonna be. Freehanding that as well like this and then connecting, I'm gonna connect it with a rounded shape and then I'll probably stand up and, and take a look at it and figure out if it looks right. So it doesn't look quite right and let me just rearrange the camera here. So my oval is definitely not perfect but we can fix that later on and it doesn't really matter for this particular example. So now we need to get this edge and this edge to be symmetrical. So here we go something like that and just doing my best, it won't be perfect. And then we have this bottom part that's a little bit rounded like so, okay? Now our focus is gonna be the painting after all, but if you do wanna make sure you get it accurate, you just flip it and then you see all of your mistakes and inconsistencies. So what I can see here is that this line should be smaller. 
In any case, I think this is good enough. Now, one thing we need to pay attention to, and that is the edge of the bowl. Okay, so here we need to preserve some kind of an edge up until around this point. Okay, this is really important. Because what that will do is uh, it will allow us to leave this highlight around here. Okay, now there is a cast shadow by the bowl. So we have this cast shadow here. Now it goes around the shape and casts itself here, but this entire area is gonna be in the shadow, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Now, here also around the edge, we have this kind of a shadow or a shadowy shape following this part of the bowl. Okay, we're gonna get that later on, but we do need to remember a highlight here and a highlight here. Okay, um, now we can start putting in the cherries. So I zoomed in a bit so you can better see uh, the details uh, of the drawing because right now we have no, um, no relevance for the palette. Uh, and what I see here uh, is a bunch of cherries inside the bowl, then a few of them spread out across the table. So we're going to start with the bowl and what seems to me like the easiest one to tackle is this one. The reason why is that it really touches this edge of the bowl. Okay, so I'm just going to put that shape in. It's kind of a rounded shape. Um, something like this and, and it reaches about the middle point of the bowl, okay? So I would say it's something like this. So that's one cherry and uh, the center point of it has this stem coming out of it that we have to remember to uh, paint as well. Now above this there is another stem coming out and cutting and this is really important, it cuts the cherry here and the bowl here. Okay, it doesn't cut them together because compositionally that looks better, what I'm doing now. So even if it would have cut them here, I would have moved it a, r a bit to the right, okay? And I'm really going in details here and detail here because it's important uh, for me that you understand. Now, we have another um, cherry that's barely visible around here. And then we have another one that goes slightly above the bowl, but it's so much in the shadow that it doesn't really matter. And uh, I didn't leave enough room for it, but hopefully that'll still work out with the edge of the bowl. Because you see we need to show this white area here, or light area rather. And then we have another stem coming out. And here I don't really have much choice, so I'm just gonna have it cut around here. But maybe I'll change its direction a bit to improve the composition. Because now we have this to the right, to the left, and then to the right again, like so. Now an important part is that these cast a shadow over the top of the bowl, like this, so that's one, that's two for this one, and then we have, and I'll, I'll have to remember to put these in later on. Uh, here we have another one, but let's first take care of the other cherries, so we have another one here, kind of like that. Trying to do the, the drawing stage really lightly and not <clears throat> overwork anything too much. Now here we have another cherry, like so. It goes like that, with the stem, like this, and it continues all the way to the bottom here, but we have another stem coming through this area, and this will cast a shadow, but because of its distance from the edge of the bowl, the shadow is only gonna be cast here. Not close to it, but here, okay? So we have one, two, three. Here we have another barely visible cherry, another barely visible cherry, and you can change these things, of course. I'm gonna add a longer stem here, there isn't one. Um, and perhaps a smaller one here. So this pretty much wraps up uh, this part of the drawing. Next up we have these cherries, and there's a reflection here, I'm not gonna uh, treat it um, as anything prominent, there's a reflection of the cherries on the bowl itself, it doesn't matter. So we have one cherry here and it's almost touching the bowl, kind of like that, with the stem going off at an angle like this, into the middle and around here. Now this is important to indicate because there's going to be a highlight here, okay? Uh, so that's one. We have Another one, I'm just gonna place them where I see them. It doesn't really matter. I don't wanna change it necessarily. So this one goes here, and it has a cherry coming towards us. So it's foreshortened. Uh, it looks much shorter than it actually is, as you'll soon see in just a moment when I add a shadow. We have a highlight here. This shadow cuts through the cherry. This is important to get. And finally, we have another one, a little larger. And I'm gonna place that a little more to the left. So somewhere around here. 
Okay. Uh, a little bit sketchy, I know. Uh, but that's fine, it's still gonna be okay. And, and the paint is gonna do most of the job. So now we have to put in the cast shadows of the cherries. So one of them goes kind of like this, but it doesn't connect with the main shadow here. Uh, though I would consider just connecting it, you know what, let's connect this one here. Uh, now we have another one, like this. And this really goes to show you the length of this stem that isn't really uh, all that much visible but it will be in the cast shadow, okay? Like this. So you can see it's quite uh, a longer one. And here we have another cast shadow going off like this. Now I'm gonna really simplify the um, painting process. Here we go, like so. And then you get it. Now I could just do a quick, um, just to sketch out some of the shaded areas. Remember, you have to be able to visualize it, that really helps. Uh, but don't forget that the cherries themselves are super dark, okay? So they'll, they will be essentially connected to their shadows in the beginning. Um, now, one thing I was starting to say, uh, I will significantly simplify the uh, painting process. So it's gonna be quick, so don't worry if this uh, introduction or drawing stage takes time. Uh, the, the next parts is, are gonna be much faster. Now, we also have some uh, of the shadows of the cherries on the bowl. We have a very sharp and strong light source so you can actually see these. And one last thing, I want to erase some lines that we don't need. So I just brought uh, my eraser here. And in particular, I want to get rid of this kind of line here, this kind of line here. Um, what else? I think this is it. We're pretty much uh, ready to go on this one. I'm gonna try and um, I'm not gonna do this too saturated, too strongly pigmented. Uh, I may go for a more uh, grayish look, uh, but we're gonna get it hopefully uh, in in as few layers as possible, okay? Uh, and that'll preserve the freshness. So let's talk about my plan for painting. I'm gonna start probably with this cherry because it's the taller, the highest part of the the things I want to paint. Uh, and I'll paint around the highlight, I'll move down and I'll connect it probably to the shadow here. I'll try and negative paint around all of these stems, connect it to the other cherries, connect it to this cherry, everything here is gonna be connected. All of this is in the shadow in any case. Um, and then I'm gonna put in that sh kind of shadow connected to this cast shadow. So it's all gonna be merged in a rather nice way, I hope. Uh, and then I'm gonna probably put in this, uh, the table details in, in a, Either a wet and wet, I need to still consider that. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. So let's get started. Okay, so I want you to better see uh, this part. So I zoomed in a bit. We don't need the right section anyway for now. I'm working with my glove because as you know, I'm allergic to nickel azo yellow, I think, because I'm allergic to nickel. So it has this weird rash that won't go away for like a year. So now I'm trying to beat that. Um, now the colors I'm gonna be using, and a lot of people ask me about it. Usually I choose my colors really at random. So uh, I'll just choose three. So the cherries color looks like this kind of red, Perlin red uh, by, um, I believe, yeah, I believe this is Perlin red by Daniel Smith or Perlin red dark or something like so, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just looking for a strong red. Uh, then for the blue, I'll probably use phthalo blue just for the ease of uh, darkening quickly because there are a lot of shadows here and this one will help me with that. And for the yellow, I'll probably use uh, nickel azo. And that's it, that's, that's kind of my uh, combination here. That's everything I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna start with this first cherry and it's just red. And I'm keeping things still wet and flowing at this stage. Uh, I'm using a big brush, the Raphael brush and, um, and working rather loosely here. Uh, it doesn't have a strong point and I'm fine with that because I, uh, I want my painting to be loose and whimsical, let's see. So I'm um, doing this. You know what, I may switch. Let's get rid of the whimsicalness for a moment. You know what, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use a synthetic brush. So it's okay to change your mind. Um, I think this will, because it's such a small piece, uh, this will allow me all the freedom I need um, while still uh, giving me some accuracy. So uh, I want this red to be stronger because it's gonna be much darker in any case like so. And then I'm gonna extend this red onto this cherry right here and onto this shadowy area like this. 
I'm gonna negative paint around this little stem here, like so. And I do have a small highlight I wanna preserve on this second cherry. And we have this cherry, no highlight. And we have this cherry, yes, highlight. <laughs> and then I'm gonna connect it directly to the bowl, like so. And I don't care if that blue is gonna seep into my cherries, I'm fine with that. But what I'm not fine with is losing the highlights. So I'm just gonna dab off some of the paint here, connect it like this, leave that small highlight for the stem. And I'm gonna probably make in, in kind of a green color later on, work around those stems. And, and I really don't know what I'll get. I'm doing a bit of a different approach from the last time I painted this and I did paint this uh, a while back. Now I'm gonna connect it to this side of the things. I'm gonna add this here. I could have also, by the way, covered everything up with red here and it won't be uh, as bad, but I just decided to start bluing it up from the get. You just have to be careful not to lose your highly pigmented uh, red. So now I'm gonna grab some more of that pure red. Um, I'm gonna paint around this highlight here like this. And I'm gonna continue like this and I have to leave the stem here as well. But then there's a secondary highlight right next to it that I lost a bit. So as you can see, you can dab really endlessly and then bring back what you lost like this. Um, maybe a little thinner and now we'll connect it to this. Now I'm not worried about this section because I'm done with it pretty much. All I worry about now is just connecting it with the right side. And here, because uh, this part is a little bit more in the shadow, I'm gonna merge all my primary colors and make this dark, kind of ugly muted color, okay? I don't wanna use my pure yellow as much still. I'm gonna just add a bit of it, but I don't mind the kind of grayness of it all right now. Uh, but what I will do is start connecting to this shadow, okay? So I'm gonna do this, do that. Now I have to work rather fast. Um, so I'm gonna put, all of this is in the shadow in any case. So I'm just gonna put these cherries in here a little bit with a hint of red, but not too much. Like so, around this highlight here, connect it here. And here we have a bit of a lighter section. So I'm just gonna bring back some water and do it that way. And then I'm gonna connect it to this large shape, okay? Like so. And by the way, I see that I run out of space on my camera as always. Uh, so I'm gonna have to perhaps pause the video just for a second. But for now we're connecting as much of the areas as possible, okay? And this will bring a lot of the grace that we're after. Like this. Um, into this work. So now I'm warming it up as you notice. And I'm just gonna wet this area so that I don't lose it. And I'm gonna quickly uh, charge my, uh, empty some space on my camera and come back hopefully and it'll still uh, be wet. But I just need to blend that edge because as you can see it's a little blended here in the reference. And you know what, we can continue from this spot with darker paint in just a moment. That's not really a problem. So we're gonna pause the video for a moment and we can continue and the wash wasn't too interrupted, just a bit, but I'll have to work fast now. So I'm gonna immediately connect this to a bit of a darker shadow, but let's, you know what, let's push it into some green territory and maybe add some more blue. And this entire section is a little darker but I don't want it to be too, I, I went a little overboard here. So I'm just gonna pull back on that. And don't worry with the darks, it's all gonna make a little more sense. Uh, but now I need more room to move. So I'm gonna do it like so. I'm gonna move the palette just a bit to the right. And here I can connect this to the shadow on the table. Gonna negative paint around this and I'll actually connect it already uh, to the shadow on the left 
like so. Like this, connect, 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 paint around, connect, fill that area up here. And then probably I'm just gonna merge it all the way back to uh, the tabletop itself because this entire area is in the shadow. So I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna get some backgrounds here for the water I just added, but that's fine. I'm ready to <laughs> deal with that. Uh, here there's a bit of a blue, lighter blue value and I'm gonna move the palette yet again. Connect this here. Now this part is really blurry, but it's gonna contrast nicely with this part, with these shadows that aren't gonna be as blurry. I'm gonna do these um, wet on dry. So here we go, one shadow, two shadows, three shadows, and I think we're pretty much good to go. Now one thing I do wanna do is charge this back with some darker paint, especially around this area. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge, so bear with me. I'm gonna move this whole thing to the left so you can better see my palette. Um, and I'm gonna mix the blue and uh, the red. And I'm gonna just try and charge this area, all of the shadowy area, with a bit of a stronger shadow all around the bottom of the bowl as well. Now you can see a separation begins to occur between the tabletop and the uh, bowl. Connect this. And you really don't want to overdo the shadows and I am close to overdoing them, but that's fine. Now, maybe just a little bit yellow to that and use it for the backmost area like so, because here it has to light up a little bit. And I think that's it. I'm gonna try and fix some of that back run. Like this. I don't know if what I did worked, uh, but that's what happens when you have to take a break, so that's I'm uh, sleeping in the bed I made for forgetting to empty the camera. Uh, but in any case, now I'm gonna connect uh, this shadow onto the cherry. So we're doing it the other way around. We're first doing the shadow and then connecting it to the cherry. There is a highlight here. I'm gonna paint around that. And notice how I'm still essentially in the same wash. Uh, because I'm connecting as many shapes as I can, this is not, not always easy. Uh, but it does lead to, in my opinion, the most preferable flowy watercolor-like result, okay? Now, I can darken this already with red because it's going to be much darker, all of it, actually. So I could just go back, put in some dark red, and now you start to get a feeling for the shine um, of the whole scene, just generally speaking. <clears throat> so now, and I'm not going to connect these two, I'm going to be careful. Because if I'm going to connect them, I'm going to have a nightmare with this cherry. This part I'm keeping light. And then I'm starting to darken it up the more I get to the right. Like so. And I'm going to darken this particular one with all of my primaries. So something like this. I just need to paint around the stem, okay? And connect it with the shadow here. Notice how beautiful it looks and how much already there's this feeling of shininess and, and beauty to it. And if you're gonna work that way of connecting everything then you really need to be prepared because right now you know you'd think oh I'm done but I'm not. Let me show you why because this connects to this part and if I'm not gonna connect these two now I'm gonna get uh, not as flowy of a result. Now we can move on to the cherry on the left. Um, and I think with this one, I'm gonna do it the brightest. Um, and maybe add some variation with yellow because I do want it to be a little more detailed than the rest because it's the closest to us, okay? So this is just me making decisions uh, on the fly that are gonna have some compositional impact. Notice how it brings it forward when I'm using some pure yellow on it and connect it with a shadow that's gonna be a little lighter. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be dark, but it's not gonna be as dark as the rest of the shadows here. Maybe a little more yellow. It went a little too blue, like this. 
with pure yellow, connect this onto the cast shadow, like so, with this shape, round it up like this, and I think this is finally it for the first wash. So this was a very uh, grueling wash, I would say. Now let me hold it up close so you can better see the details. So you can see here. Now a lot of the beauty is gonna come once I add the, the background here and I may even leave this tabletop maybe yellow, but I'm not sure about that yet. I could have just covered it all in yellow and then did some wet and wet, but I decided not to for now. Um, and you can see the highlights and it's interesting. One thing I did miss, I think, is this part around here. I need to close off that highlight. And like so. And then, then once I uh, first off add that dark background, it's gonna make everything pop. I can actually do that now. Uh, and then I'll try and figure out what I do with the tabletop and everything. So let's turn this around because it's gonna make our lives much easier when putting the background in. Now, one thing to remember is the background is really, really dark. Oops, dropped my brush. The background is really, really dark. Uh, so we have to um, be prepared to produce, to create a, a large quantity of paint, to mix a large quantity of paint. So let's get to that. Okay, so for the background, I'm gonna choose a dark, as dark a color as I can produce. And I want it to be muted as well because I don't want it to pop in any way when compared to this part that's actually my center of interest. And now we really have to make sure we mix enough paint, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. Now the reason I flipped the paper again is because it's gonna make it much easier to fill in the area. And I think what we'll do is we'll go from this point, move around and all the way to this part. Um, we could in fact rotate this this way and it will work as well. You know what, let's try that. I never tried doing it this way, but I think it will work out really nicely. Now I'm just mixing in until I see um, a color that, that looks like, to me at least, is gonna be right. This is a little too green, so I'm gonna add a bit of red to it. And now it's muted as much as I want, probably. And I can start painting and it's fairly dark. So let's get started here. A lot of negative painting is gonna be involved in this effort. And we have to be very careful. I'm using my Raphael brush because I do wanna cover the area quickly. So I'm compromising with the edge in order to get a quick result because this is a fairly large brush that can cover up very large spaces. Now here I have to be careful around the stems. This is really the only detail I need to leave here. That's one. And you really with time learn how to feel what the brush is gonna do, okay? And you get more sensible with time. It's a little hard doing these negative shapes in the beginning is really hard and, and mine is gonna be a little shaky as well as you can see here, uh, but that's fine. Uh, with time you get used to the specific way that your brush does things and then it's much easier. Now notice how because this is a long, uh, long shape, my spontaneous decision to work from this side to that side was the right one. If I'd have flipped it, I would have probably had a much harder time. Uh, this makes it much easier and you have to learn these little tricks to help you um, do things in, a, in an easier way. First off, so that it's easier, but second I would say is just so that it will be possible. You know, watercolor is such a challenging medium from so many different angles that you wanna make it as easy on yourself as you can. Uh, so this is one way to do it. And my result here is gonna be far from perfect, just generally speaking with this painting, but you get to see the process with me together and that's a really positive thing. Um, now I just need to make sure I leave that highlight around here. And there is a bit of a area to cover there, like so, like this, like this, and this is really good enough in terms of uh, the negative shape. I'm gonna move on with this all the way to the bottom. Now here I need to be a little careful. I think it all dried, but I don't want to merge them too much. I'm just gonna go really fast here in one go. 
and do it like this. I can lighten things up a little bit around here if I want to. Uh, I could leave a few gleams of light. Let's turn it around and see if that's something that works. It could work. Uh, I just want to fix this shape a little bit. Right around here. Like this. Round it up. And I think we're really good to go on this one. And now that we've moved it a bit, now you can see what a nice sense of light we get, okay? And this is really something beautiful. Now what I think I'll do is, I'll need to do that anyway, is to cover up this entire area with a very light glaze. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it like that. Hmm, I'm really considering doing that. You know what I'm gonna do? I know what I'm gonna do. There is this shadow moving here. I'm just gonna add that later on, and then it will feel connected to this area, and it's gonna look okay. And that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna shade this part of the table. It's too light for my taste, and, and I don't think it needs shading, but what I will do is there's this shadow moving here, so I'm gonna continue it all the way here, like this, even though it'll break uh, my edge. I'm still doing it because I will profit from it later on compositionally, okay? This area as well. And I don't mind connecting it to the background here. Now, uh, I'm gonna allow this some time to dry. I have some extra moist here that I can soak up so that it doesn't leave some ugly backgrounds. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give this a few chance, a chance to uh, dry and then we'll come back with the, the deeper shadows here and some other details. Okay, so this one is like almost fully dry uh, and if you notice it also flattened significantly if you compare it to how it was uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, now here is where experience comes into play because my initial uh, inclination was to cover everything up here with yellow but I decided not to. I think it'll beat the purpose so what I'm gonna do is as I mentioned earlier extend the shadow over here hinting at that shadow coming from there and you can see it in the reference and coming all the way up to here and then I'm gonna put in all the rest of the details okay so this is everything we're gonna do um, and when I say the rest of the details all I mean is basically the cherries here the shadows on them the stems all of those good stuff so I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit because the right side is irrelevant right now and we'll get started on this one so first I'm gonna need a warmer color so something like what I'm mixing here and I'm gonna place it like so. And remember, it's leading up all the way to the bottom part. Now, I just wanna make sure that I figure out where the bowl starts exactly, so I think somewhere around here. And I'm gonna darken this up just a little bit more with some red and some blue. Because there is quite a difference in the value and I'm gonna blend down the, the bottom edge here. So I'm gonna just do that. I'm coming back with a wet brush and just blending the edge. And then I'm gonna come back with again a damp brush and just soak up this part. And now we have a bit of a better defined edge. Uh, so now what I wanna do is start working on the shadows from top to bottom. So you can see there is a heavy shadow in many of the cherries uh, that I need to get. And it's gonna be very dark with an, an, a hint of red. Okay, uh, I do want to preserve the redness of it all. So I'm coming back with some very dark paint and this goes around here. Now, because I'm working on smaller areas and I'm gonna move this just a bit, because I'm working on smaller areas, I can allow myself more time to properly blend. So first I'm gonna lay down that dark wash around here, like so. And then because it's a smaller section, I can take my time, wet the brush, dry it slightly, and come back and blend this shadow in, which will lead to the sense of roundedness uh, in this uh, cherry. Okay, so here we go. We got a bit of a nice blending going on. Some more red, some more blue, some more yellow. I'm using everything, really. And now I'm going to connect it to this cherry here. Now I need to constantly interpret what I see, make sure that I don't make any glaring mistakes, but this is pretty much almost entirely in the shadow from the bottom here. 
Uh, I think here's a good stopping point because I have this stem. So I'm gonna go over this part like so. Darken it up like this. Darken this entire side of the cherry. And I think this is really all I need here. I'm just gonna blend some small section of this, like so. And I'm gonna move on to the other side of the stem, which is around here. And here I wanna make sure that I leave the bowl area clean and untouched, because as you can see, it's a little lighter here. And hopefully you can see the details. Now, I'm not going over these shadows at all. I'm done with them. Uh, they're gonna be lighter, so that's fine. Filling up that one cherry and then going around it like so. Filling in that second one. My coordination's a little off today. I don't know why, but uh, hopefully the result is still nice. It's like I'm having a hard time, maybe because ergonomically I'm not, the, the arrangement right now isn't the most comfortable because of the palette. I'm gonna move this a bit aside. Uh, when you film, you have to worry about what people see and to make sure they see everything and that can take a significant amount of your capabilities um, to focus on the painting process itself. But I'm gonna now darken it a little more, like so. This feels to me like this area is significantly darker. Now we've created this nice separation between the cherries and the bowl. Now one more thing I want to do is add a bit of shadow to this cherry right over here. Come back with a bit of a wet brush, blend it up, then soak up some of the excess moist because I put a lot of stuff here. Now here it flips, so this shadow here on the bowl is actually darker. Now I'm gonna rearrange it once again, sorry about that. And I'm gonna zoom out just a bit. I actually have a phone call, just a second. Okay, sorry about that, uh, now we can continue. Uh, and I'm just gonna darken the area around the cherries uh, to make them pop a little. Now for that, I do want to keep it fairly gray because um, it shouldn't take away from the attention of the, uh, from the cherries. So some negative painting around, around them. The negative painting really never stops. Uh, so here we go. Now we have a couple of shapes to pay attention to. First one is this cherry right here. So that's one. And you can see now I brought the shape of that roundedness, like so. And then there's a second one, actually two of them, uh, that I can see here like this. So that's the second one here. And we have this shadow right around here that will hopefully make this one pop like this. And I believe we also have this one. Now here there are a couple of other stems, but I'm ignoring them. And now you get a better feeling for how the sh cherries fit in. Now there are a couple of other things to do. I wanna give some kind of a color to the stems, but it has to be really light and very green-ish. So I have a very light green paint and I'm just gonna go over uh, the areas where it's wet. Here it's gonna be a big trouble if I now try and paint them. But I'm gonna fill them up and what this will do is it will create a separation between them and the very light white areas, okay? And this is really important in fact because if it was, if they are white as the highlights, it, it sort of cheapens the effect. Uh, hopefully that makes sense because everything is white. So now every highlight is white. So now white means nothing. But now notice how this green uh, really will help bring out the, the real true highlights. Now at the same time, I do want to kill off some of the uh, highlights on the edge of the bowl here that shouldn't be there. So I'm picking up some of this cooler paint here, like so. And I'm going to use that to kill off the highlights here. And I don't care if it blends with the stems, that's fine because it's all light anyway. Kind of like that. Now I just have to pick up the excess moisture because otherwise I'm gonna get some back runs with the drier areas. And here we go, we're pretty much done with this. Now we're gonna do the same thing for these uh, stems right here because they should be slightly uh, darker and greener than the backdrop which is the table here and notice how I'm alternating between a very cool more synthetic green and a more yellow green. 
Okay, a yellow greens and muted greens are among my favorites. And uh, you have to be able to, usually with greens is, is the color that people tend to mess up the most when it comes to creating an interesting effect. And I don't wanna do that, so, uh, so I do wanna have my greens be interesting. Uh, so now we have all of the stems. I may have overworked this one just a tiny bit. That's fine. This part should be thicker like this. Uh, and now, I think I can work on these very carefully, but very carefully. And maybe I'll connect them and I shouldn't. I don't know, we'll see about that. And this one as well, like so. This one, very gently. Again, I don't want it to blend too much with the blue in the background or the, the dark in the background. And now we're pretty much done with uh, these. Now I'm gonna do something that, that I think is really important. Uh, and we have some work to do with the shadows, a little bit more work, but what I want to do now, let me move the, the palette aside and explain. So what I want to do next, and if you uh, carefully observe the reference, there is quite a difference between how dark this shadow is and the bowl. So to make that separation, I'm gonna start glazing on top of this layer, and then as soon as I get to here, I'm gonna darken it significantly, okay? And uh, it's gonna be important because right now the bowl is really merged with the table, which looks nice, but isn't the final look we're going for. And at the same time, I have now this opportunity. I wanna correct this lower section of the bowl and connect it with the shadow here. Just a small mess up on my end. So uh, this is what we're gonna do now. Let me just rearrange it so you can better see everything. And I'm gonna start a very light glaze. I'm gonna use uh, the Raphael brush for that because um, it's really good in these kinds of uh, light glazes and because it's uh, not synthetic and hard, too hard on the paper, um, it's gonna be able to glaze very gently, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see what happens. So first off, just a bit of water like this and I don't wanna mute it too much so I'm gonna add a bit more yellow and red to it. A lot more yellow and red to it in fact and now we can get started like so and you can see how there, it immediately gives it a bit more presence now I'm gonna move towards the bottom section like this I'm gonna blend some of the left areas let's go like this because these still need to be blended and even a little more but the main part here really is to get things darker around the bottom, okay? And that applies to uh, almost all of this shadow that should be much darker, but especially at the right side. So I'm now connecting it like this. And I'm now gonna start dropping in some darker uh, paint. Now it still is quite warm. So I'm gonna keep it warm, but I'm, I'm definitely darkening it. And I wanna get this right in this go because if I'm gonna add another glaze, it's gonna to be too much. So we have the shape of the bowl like so. Darken it with a bit of the blue. And hopefully that'll make the, that'll create the nice separation we're after. So here we go like this. Don't worry, I'm gonna blend that top edge in just a moment. Um, but actually, I think I'm gonna lift back. I feel like this part is even too dark. So I'm gonna lift back on that and bring back some of the bowl. You see like this. Now we have a better separation, I would say. Maybe just one more touch. And this is really, I'm sometimes I'm experimenting with the effects that will be created. I don't know exactly what will happen, but I'm taking the risk. Uh, and I think I'm gonna need to darken it a little more so a little pure paint here around the bottom and a bit of a pure shadow here then a bit of touch hinting at the shape of the bottom of the uh, bowl and now I can blend it back with this top part like so and all the way here here it gets a little cooler and again, hopefully what I'm doing now isn't overworking it, but who knows really. And then I'm gonna just, I think, blend that into the, kind of into the distance here, like so. And hopefully that at least created that nice separation here. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush just to get again the, the effects of the stems to merge with this 
second glaze. And this is really my bad. I should have gotten all of this area to be as dark on the first go. Uh, now I do want to close that small gap off. It's starting to annoy me, like so. And I'm going to darken this shadow ever so slightly. And I'm going to darken this cherry ever so slightly here and here. This is darker. Here we have a darker patch. And then I'm going to blend some of that, like so, like this. And hmm, I'm considering adding some more darkness. Let's try it out because the last time I thought it was dark enough and it wasn't. So I'm just going to add a bit more darkness to it. Let it blend. And I think with that we're done with this section. Let's move on here and hopefully we didn't mess anything up. I'm going to put this here. I'm gonna put this shadow right here, paint around the stem carefully as before. These should be just a little darker. You know what, I think that's too dark. I'm gonna pick back some of that up, especially near the edge here, just like that. It's mainly the, the cherry that I wanna darken. And I'm going to use a bit of a pure red here, like this. Here, same thing. I'm going to use some pure red. All of this right side should be darker. And this part of the shadow, but the rest I'm not going to touch really. I'm just going to blend that shadow in. And I'm getting close to starting to overwork this and hurting the impression. Actually, some would argue that it was better when this was very colorful. But uh, in any case, I I think I'm gonna stop now with all of these stuff and add just the small shadows on all of the stems and with that we'll wrap it up. I really don't want to overwork this one. Okay, so shadows on the stems. Uh, these shouldn't be too dark. I'm gonna find a mix that I like, maybe something like this. And I'm just gonna add it here, so kind of like that. This entire front part should be darker. Here it's starting very thin. And then it kind of darkens around this area. Here it's very thin, so I have to be a little careful. Like this, the edge is a little darker, like so. Here in the bowl, this is going to be important as well. Like this. Like this. This one I made up, it wasn't there. And two more here, and we're done. That's it. So now hopefully the impression is a little better. Now let me zoom out so you can see everything in the full context. So here is pretty much the final result. Uh, I hope it works for you. Uh, and again, you see there is a lot of value in getting things right the first time. Had I gotten this area right the first time, we could have preserved the colorfulness and freshness of it because I had to do another glaze here. I also lost some of the yellow saturation, which I could have done better if I had mixed pure uh, yellows. But in any case, I hope you're pleased with the final uh, result and again what I love about these demos is regardless of the end result you get to see me work and think and, and ponder the possibilities and and think about how I'm gonna do things uh, which is really valuable this part should probably be darker but I'm not gonna touch that anymore I think we're, we're good uh, I don't want to uh, mess around with it too much as I said um, and this is it really happy with the result and we can now wrap up this video so this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Try to keep the process as short as possible, but still as long as necessary to do this fully. Um, again, there's a lot of decision making that's involved in producing such a painting and every painting for that matter. And notice how it's quite small, but still requires you to think about how to approach it. And all of these small tricks of rotating it and painting or rather like this and painting from top to bottom. Um, how you approach connecting shapes, merging them, the composition, things like that. These are all things you just learn with experience and by painting a lot of scenes like that. You slowly, for example, get to learn that when there is a dark backdrop, it's sometimes beneficial to start with the front and then fill that backdrop in. Um, when you have a, 
a medium uh, mid value here and then a shadow here it's beneficial to merge them together uh, but then you have to learn and this is something I'm still learning and I'm still not as good as uh, at uh, is that when you really want to produce a dark sh value here you have to go dark you have to go darker than you're brave enough to go in order to get it and I didn't get it uh, to be dark enough on the first go you get to learn how uh, the freshness of doing things in one go a la prima as much as possible is beneficial to me at least that's my style and that's how i uh, love to do things so i hope you found this helpful don't forget to like and subscribe like this video and leave a comment that really helps and tells youtube show this to more people um, and i really want more people to be able to benefit from these full tutorials completely free from start to finish and hopefully um because this is again, this is my struggle when I got started in watercolor. I realized I, I could figure out how to do the different techniques. I figured out there's wet and wet, there's wet on dry, there's lifting, there's all of those stuff. But to put it all together in the context of a process, to figure out how I want to work on something, what the work order is, that's some stuff that no one talks about really. Even if you buy these fancy DVDs by the artists that you really love, and I love as well, and I appreciate as well, they don't talk about it at all. They just do the process, give some tips that are much higher level than what I can give you because they've been doing it for uh, decades. But in any case, I want to show you the whole thing. And if I can help, and if I can be that one person that does that really well, then that makes me super happy. Let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. I really, really appreciate your support here and on Instagram and on Snapchat and via the, the emails that I get. It means a lot to me on Twitter as well, on the podcast, um, trying to just put as many stuff out there for you to enjoy in which, whichever format you enjoy. So with that being said, let's wrap it up and I will talk to you again in another vid real soon.